Hey everyone, welcome to today's live stream. I am doing this live stream because I am getting so many questions about cafeteria style minerals. Some people call them buffet style. Cafeteria style was the original name. This is not anything new. They've been popular in the cattle world for decades. In fact, when we first discovered we had a problem with copper deficiency back in 2007, this was one of the things I considered and that was 16 years ago now. I have never done it and I'm not going to do it um, for a number of reasons. And I'm gonna go through all of those today. I know I did a much shorter video on this a couple months ago or maybe even six months ago. We're gonna delete that because I don't want people to see it and think, oh, that's the end of the story. There's actually a lot that I have to say about this particular topic. So number one, is that goats don't need all the things that are in that buffet. And that is the most insanely expensive mineral option that you can find. It's hundreds of dollars to get all of them. Depending on who is selling it, it's somewhere between 16 to up to 23 is the latest number that I saw, which just nearly made me faint. It includes a lot of minerals and vitamins that goats do not need to have supplemented. So for example, vitamin A, Giving goat, putting vitamin A out for goats is a huge waste because vitamin A is in all green plants. Now, a lot of humans could become deficient in vitamin A because we don't like green stuff, but goats are eating green stuff all day long when they're in the pasture. So they're not going to wind up vitamin A deficient. In fact, when you read the literature on vitamin A deficiency, the answer is not to give them a supplement. The answer is to give them green food. So they don't need a vitamin A supplement, and yet you're paying for that as part of that big 15 dish or 18 dish or 23 dish buffet for those goats, and they don't need it. Um, the same thing is true for vitamin D. Unless your goats, goats make vitamin D just like we do. So unless your goats are spending 24 hours a day inside, they don't have a problem with vitamin D deficiency. Um, vitamin E also, it is abundant in plants and colostrum is also abundant in vitamin E. So your newborns um, are born and then they get a huge dose of vitamin E the first time that they nurse and they get that colostrum. And I could just go on and on about all the different things that your goats do not need. One that I find really scary is sulfur. Sulfur is a copper antagonist and we have sulfur in our well water. That's why we had such a problem with copper deficiency for so many years because of the high sulfur in our well water. I get really worried when I see any mineral that has sulfur in it. And unfortunately, lately I've seen a few, a few new mineral companies popping up that are saying, we put sulfur in our minerals because sulfur is important for ABC. And it's like, well, yeah, it is, but they get plenty of sulfur in their diet and sulfur is a copper antagonist. So if they put sulfur in there, then they need to increase the amount of copper. Um, sulfur is also an antagonist to selenium. So if there's, so if they get too much sulfur, then they could be at risk for copper and selenium deficiency. So goats don't need most of these things. The only deficiencies that we see consistently across um, with goats anywhere is copper, selenium, and zinc. That's really about it. Goats do not usually, if they have a good diet, a proper diet, goats do not usually become deficient in anything other than those three. And so that's why you know, when people ask me, like, is this a good mineral? Is that a good mineral? I'm looking at them and I'm telling them, you know, yes or no, there's plenty of copper in there or selenium or zinc, because those are the things that they are most likely to have a problem with. But so you don't need to be buying 15, 18 or 23 individual minerals for your goats because they get almost all of what they need from their diet. Um, the other thing is that, like I said, this is the most expensive option you can have. So, and I see people recently, I got contacted by somebody who has three pet baby weathers. She spent all this money on this buffet for three pet weathers. And the problem with that is that they're not going to last. Like they're not three baby goats are not going to eat that much. And they're all going to, these minerals are all going to go bad. And each mineral has a different shelf life. I don't know what 
people are doing. I know there's like at least one individual farm that sells them. Now, I don't know what they're doing in terms of like telling you what the expiration date is on these. But if they tell you that there's no expiration date, that's just plain wrong. And it varies from one mineral to another in terms of how long they last. Um, conditions can also make a difference. You know, like selenium can be leached out in of a mineral if you have very wet, humid conditions. So um, you could you could wind up like you think you've got, you know, all these minerals out there and really half of them are no longer uh, potent anymore. They've completely lost their potency just because they're so old and you're not going to know which ones they are. Um, and so that could be a problem. Like the goats can't consume it if they don't, if they can't, if they're not valid. Um, so the next thing is that, um, so people are basing this, a lot of this on Dr. Fred Provenza's research, and he had a very long prestigious career. And he is the man who studied the nutritional wisdom of goats and cows and other animals. And I interviewed him on my podcast a couple years ago and just thought about it since I started. We will put a link to that podcast episode in the comment section so that if you want to listen to that whole podcast or read the transcript on it, you can. But the bottom line on his research is that animals eat to correct deficiencies. They don't just they don't just know how to go eat everything they need to eat in the proper um, dose in order to have their system perfectly balanced. So it's always kind of an up and a down. It's like, you know, they're going to, they're going to become deficient in something and then they'll figure out how to correct that if they can. Um, one of the examples he gave with his research was that they saw these cows eating rabbits and um, somebody said to him, wow, that really shows they have no idea what they're doing. And um, being the questioning person that he is, Dr. Provenza actually tested those cows and found out that the cows were deficient in phosphorus. So the reason the cows were eating the rabbits was to correct that phosphorus deficiency. And in the podcast episode, he gives other examples where animals eat really bizarre things like goats eating urine soaked rat houses um, and why they did this to correct a deficiency in their diet. Um, so they are eating to correct deficiencies, not to keep their minerals at a perfect level at all times. So you may see goats become deficient in something. And if you believe this really works, then, um, you need to sit back and just wait. And that originally has been one of my big um, things. One of my big objections to this is that people don't want to sit back and wait. People look at the minerals and they get in their own head how much of each of those minerals that the goat should be eating. And if the goats aren't eating them, then they get upset. You know, I got contacted one time by a woman whose, whose goats were not eating the copper sulfate at all. She's like, all they're eating is the zinc. And she was shoving copper oxide wear particles down their throat because she didn't think they were consuming enough copper. And yet you looked at them and you're like, these goats are not exhibiting signs of copper deficiency. And the reason they're eating the zinc is because zinc is a copper antagonist. And so they're trying to reduce the amount of copper. They're trying the too much copper. One of the first problems with too much copper is that it's going to cause a zinc deficiency. Um, so zinc and copper are actually antagonistic to each other. They need to be in balance. And um, if they're not, then it could cause either a copper deficiency or a zinc deficiency. So by giving them all that copper, she was causing a zinc deficiency, which is why the goats were eating so much zinc to try to make up for it. So they were trying to make up for that deficiency. And she was still upset because she saw them not eating copper. And it's like, well, they're not going to eat copper because you've already made them zinc deficient with too much copper. So... Um, so, um, they're eating to correct deficiencies. And, um, I just saw somebody said, I wonder if that's a typo because she says that it's expensive and it's worth the price. Um, because it's really, because what I've been talking about, I don't know if you just popped in, um, but it's really not worth the price. There's a lot of other stuff. Like there's some mixed minerals, are definitely, um, definitely give your goats what they need. Um, and so that's what I'm talking about here. Um, 
the thing about using cafeteria style minerals, and, and I said, this is nothing new to me. I have known about these since we first discovered our problem with copper deficiency back in 2007. And I knew back then that the cattle producers were using these. And um, I ultimately decided not to do this for my goats. I researched the individual um, goats. I, I, I researched the individual types of minerals. And that's why I settled on using sweet licks. And back then Purina came in second because their copper was lower. Um, that's why I went with the sweet licks. Purina has now changed their formulation. Their copper's higher. So I recommend both. Um, Sweet Licks Meat Maker and also Purina um, Goat Minerals because both of those have good mixes of minerals and you don't usually have too many problems with deficiency. Um, so the other thing is, so there is absolutely zero research on cafeteria style minerals. If somebody has a study where they did liver biopsies on goats that showed that they were doing great, then please post it in the comment section below because I haven't seen it. And no one has ever been able to give me any research when I ask for it that specifically shows that goats had liver biopsies to check their mineral levels when they were using cafeteria style minerals. Um, and I'm not doing that research because I'm not using it. Like the Sweet Licks Meat Maker works great for my goats. And so I'm not going to go um, switch. I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on these mineral buffets and then spend the money on doing the liver biopsies. And I have done lots of liver biopsies on my goats. Um, so that's why I know what I'm doing works for my goats. Um, so you should not. So the thing is, um, when you read the research, a lot of people are extrapolating Dr. Provenza's research um, and, and saying that, that his research says that goats can keep their things completely balanced. And, <clears throat> and it doesn't, he actually never studied cafeteria style minerals. People are just extrapolating from that. So, um, you know, cows don't go around eating rabbits for phosphorus. They don't eat rabbits at all. They're vegetarians. And so they were phosphorus deficient. And that's why those cows he studied were eating the rabbits is was to try to correct that phosphorus deficiency. So then another thing is I have an article that I have shared with my nutrition students forever. Um, and that is also um, talks about Dr. Provenza's research. And it says um, because you will all you will see most vet professors um, will say that goats cannot regulate their mineral intake. And so this article that I have shared with my students forever um, talks about the fact that research that they did in the 90s where they tried to use cafeteria style minerals showed that it was random. The consumption of the minerals was random. And they believe that the reason that that happened is because all of the minerals had salt in them. So there was no flavor difference to teach the goats that when you get this flavor, you can correct this deficiency. When you get this flavor, you can correct this deficiency. So, um, so the, uh, basically if you're going to do that, you need to find minerals that do not use salt as the carrier. And a lot of the systems that I see that are being sold are salt based. So every single one of those minerals has salt in it. You know, it's like 95% salt and 5% whatever the mineral is. Um, every now and then somebody will say, oh, I'm using pure copper sulfate, which honestly just scares the daylights out of me because copper sulfate is very easily absorbed. I know one author who used that, um, her, she's retired now, but I know one author who used that for her herd. And she would only put out like a tablespoon at a time um, because of the risk of toxicity. So she, she didn't have a big dish of copper sulfate out there. Um, I personally used, so I used Sweet Licks Free Choice um, for since probably since around 2008 or nine. I think I started with Purina for a bit and then I switched to Sweet Licks when I back then, because they had more copper, they don't now, now Purina has more copper. Um, but I was using 
um, the sweet licks. And then I knew like, okay, I'm using sweet licks. And because of the conditions on my farm and from looking at liver mineral panels that I sent to livers that I sent to a lab, I know that my goats are uh, low in copper and borderline on selenium. And so we would give extra copper oxide wire particles to deal with the copper deficiency, um, which not everyone needs to do. Sweet Licks has a great amount of copper in it. So most people, unless you have mineral antagonists, you probably don't have a copper deficiency problem. And then the selenium, um, for five years, I was using a free choice selenium that I got from Caprine Supply. And unfortunately, they quit selling it. Um, but it was selenium and the carrier in that was wheat midlands, not salt. And so that's why I felt really comfortable with that. And I would put it out there and the liver test that we had, as long as I had the free choice selenium, my, my selenium levels were always awesome. We had zero retained placentas during that time. We had zero kids having trouble, trouble suckling at birth, you know, unless they had hypothermia, which is a different situation. Selenium's not going to help them if they have hypothermia. Um, so we had no symptoms whatsoever of selenium deficiency. All the liver biopsies, uh, liver tests came back perfect for selenium and copper and everything. We were doing that. Unfortunately, Caprine Supply quit selling that. And since then, I have not been able to find a selenium that really works for that. Um, we had a buck die last year that was high in selenium. Um, so the selenium experiment I was doing last year did not work. And, and that's the thing that I really want people to know that if you're going to do this, you are basically, you're doing an experiment on your goats. And so whenever a goat dies, you need to send the liver in to get a panel done. Or if you have goats that you butcher, you need to send the liver in to have a mineral panel done on that. Um, I send them in to um, Michigan state, the veterinary um, diagnostic lab there. Tammy, um, who is a FAMACHA instructor who helps me answer parasite questions here on Facebook, she um, gets her testing done at Texas A&M University in Texas. So I'm sure there's other universities. You can mail them in. I live two, uh, two states away from Michigan. Um, and so I mail my livers to Michigan State to get them tested. Um, and so that's how I that's why I feel really confident that what we are doing works. Um, if you um, don't do the testing, then it could be a while. Like you could, you could be having all kinds of problems and you might not know why you're having them. And the thing is with, with 15 to 23 different minerals laid out there, um, you could wind up with toxicity in any of those, um, almost, you know, like vitamin E has a very, very low level of toxicity. Um, that's one of the only ones I know of that I don't really worry about toxicity in, but anything else, like if your goat gorges on it, you could wind up with a toxicity problem. Somebody, the person who recently contacted me with the three kids, like these kids are just a few months old and she thinks that one of them is copper deficient. Well, there is no reason that a kid that age should be copper deficient. Even when we had problems, really bad problems with copper deficiency, our kids were born in a good state. Like we've never given kids copper supplements until they were at least six months old. Um, unless we were just giving them, we were giving them a small dose um, for parasites back when we had parasite problems. Um, but we've never worried about copper deficiency in kids less than six months old. And so the fact that she's got free choice, she's got this cafeteria style minerals out there and she already thinks that she's got, she thinks that the black coat is fading, which, so that's the challenge with, there's two challenges with kids. Number one is kids can change color. Um, and so to me, it, to me, it kind of looks like the kid may just be changing color, but she's worried about copper deficiency. And I said, well, if you're worried about copper deficiency and you believe cafeteria style minerals work, then this kid should consume enough copper to correct that. Um, there is no way she's asking me because she wanted to give the kid copper. And I'm like, no way should you give that kid copper? You don't know if like, I mean, like if this legitimately does work, like you don't know, maybe five minutes ago, the kid just went to the copper feeder and scarfed down a ton of copper sulfate. Copper sulfate is extremely well absorbed. And so you throw a bunch of copper oxide on top of that. 
you could push that kid into toxicity and he could wind up dead from copper toxicity. Um, so it's very, so, and one of the challenges with this, I know people are, it's, it's frustrating. People are doing this with kids. The other thing that Dr. Provenza's research has shown and that many of us with goats know is that our goats, our kids learn from their moms. So when you have a kid that is damn raised, it is nibbling, whatever mom is nibbling on, it is nibbling on that by the time it's three or four days old. It's mouthing the hay. It's mouthing. If you put grain in there for her, goat feed in there for her, it's nibbling at that. So they learn to eat what their mom eats. Dr. Provenza also, one of his colleagues did research on teaching goats to eat weeds that they don't really like. Um, and a big part of that is getting a couple of the goats to eat it. If you can just get a couple of the goats to eat it, then the others will eat it. Um, so goats mimic each other. So it, then that's how kids learn. So if you put kids, if you, if you put kids out there with a buffet style, um, minerals, they don't have anybody to learn from. Um, you know, it's like asking a toddler to figure out everything on their own, like not teaching them anything about how to eat. So, um, so that also really concerns me. Um, so I got my little notes here. Um, so the reasons I don't recommend cafeteria style minerals, number one, goats don't need all the things. So you are wasting a ton of money. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, I, cause I've told this to people and they're like, oh, well then I'm not, oh, well then I won't buy vitamin A if my goats are on pasture or I won't buy sulfur or I, I'm like, no, <laughs> if you're going to have these things out there, then yeah, you need, if you're going to have a bunch of mother, you need to have all of them. If you're going to have copper sulfate out there. Then you absolutely need the sulfur out there because if a goat accidentally eats too much copper sulfate, hopefully they're going to go to the sulfur to try to balance that out before the copper sulfate kills them. Um, or if they, you know, it's just, it's like, if you're, if you're either, you believe in it or you don't. And unfortunately, most people really don't believe in it. It's like, it's like goat birthing. Everybody's chill until they think the goat goes into labor. And then they're like, oh my God, it's going to die. Um, so you just, it, it's people say they believe in this and then they, they get it. And then they're emailing me saying, oh, I think my goat's becoming copper deficient. Should I give it copper oxide wear particles? No. <laughs> um, so, um, so that's number one is that goats don't need all of these things. So you are wasting a ton of money. Like, you know, you could, you can get a bag of sweet licks for, or other minerals for 15 or $20 and save yourself hundreds of dollars. Um, the other thing is that the minerals do get old and you're not, and you're not necessarily going to know when each of those minerals has lost its potency, either that, or you're just going to, again, you're going to be spending a ton of money replacing them all on a regular basis to make sure that none of them have lost their potency. There is no research on cafeteria style minerals that I've seen. If you have an actual research study, not just a blog post, not, I know there's blog posts out there where people are like, oh, I've been using cafeteria style minerals for three months and my goats have never looked better. That's great that it's been working for the last three months or even the last year, but there are so many different things involved in this. Um, and unless you've got the liver biopsies um, to prove that your goats have balanced, then we don't really know what's going on. I didn't know I had a copper deficiency problem for the first few years we had a goat, had goats. So mineral deficiencies and stuff, sometimes they take time to show up. And if your goat's deficient in something important during breeding season, they might not get pregnant. And then a couple months later, they correct that deficiency. So um, it's, it's like I said, it's an up and down. If you, and I need to put that article in um, the chat so that, um, we can see that. Um, let me see if I put that. Yes. Okay. There. I just hit that. Um, so it looks like it went to Facebook and YouTube, both the nutritional wisdom of goats. Um, you can read that whole thing, the interview with Dr. Provenza, where he talks about how goats eat to correct deficiencies. Um, and then the last thing is that another article that was written based upon Dr. Provenza's research 
was that um, when you offer individual minerals, that they should not all have salt in them. If they all have salt in them, goats are going to eat them sporadically um, or randomly. Goats are going to eat them randomly if there's salt in all of them because they're not going to be able to taste the difference between them. Um, so they're not going to have make any connection between what makes them feel a certain way. So I hope this has been helpful and given you a more thorough explanation of why I don't recommend cafeteria style minerals. And again, if you want to try it and you want to do, uh, I, I would say after six months, if you want to do liver biopsies on your goats, don't do blood because blood is not reliable. I have had multiple people share lab work with me and, um, they do blood and it shows, and then they do follow up with liver biopsies and the liver biopsies have completely different numbers. So I've seen people do blood and especially copper, especially is really bad about being different in the blood and the liver. Um, people will get uh, blood tests that show that their goats are fine or even high in copper. And then when they do the liver biopsies, they find out the goat's actually deficient. So you would need to do um, liver biopsies to know for sure where you're, where they're at. And I would say at least six months so that you've gone through a couple seasons, because this could also vary from season to season, whether your goats are on pasture, um, and are getting fresh browse and how long their hay has been stored and what they're getting in terms of a, um, goat grain, goat feed, because some goat feeds have added, minerals in them. So there's a lot of different things that can impact this. So um, somebody said a while ago, I had an online conversation about minerals with someone who was not wanting to use sweet licks because it didn't have the organic certification label on it. I just had to roll my eyes and move on. I can't get through to everyone. I trust they are doing research to know what is safe and good amount of each thing to have in the mix. I prefer a balanced mix versus individual items. Yeah, I like I said, I researched this very thoroughly back in 2007 um, when we first got our diagnosis of copper deficiency based on a liver biopsy of a goat that died. And um, cafeteria style minerals were very popular back then. And I also read that article that talked about um, I had also read that like they shouldn't be all salt. And the only cafeteria style minerals I could find back in 2007, salt was the carrier. Um, the only thing I could find where that was not the case was that selenium supplement that was being sold by Caprine Supply, which had wheat midlands as a carrier. And it worked great. So I really liked that. Um, and I was very sad to see that they uh, quit selling that. Um, but I, you know, I always say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if your goats are healthy and thriving and productive and having plenty of babies, producing lots of milk, those kids are growing up fat and happy and healthy, then don't change it. You know, like that's the thing now people are like, are you going to try this? No, I've got something that works. I have years of mineral, uh, years of mineral panels on livers, um, that shows it works. Um, the only thing I'm still working on tweaking is our selenium because I've just, unfortunately, the only selenium I found that worked like the one from Caprine Supply is sold in 50 pound bags and um, the goats don't finish it before it starts to lose its potency um, because it's a 50 pound bag and I have 25 goats. And so anyway, um, I may go back to that because the stuff I'm doing is not, uh, not working. Um, see Elizabeth said, I love the research you share. I recommend you to new goat owners all the time. Sold some this weekend and pointed them to you to learn more. Oh, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, yeah, I'm always very interested in the research. So that's why I said, if anybody ever comes across a research on cafeteria style minerals in goats, then definitely share it with me and I will be happy to read it. In the meantime, if you're watching this and you've got any questions, feel free to post in the comment section below. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now.